Hello, and welcome to AIM International's preparatory tutorials for the Information Certification Exam. I'm Steve Weissman, Principal Consultant at Holly Group and a certified AIM training instructor in the realm of content, process, and information management. I'll be your guide as we review the exam's major domains of expertise, and I'll tell you all you need to know to earn that passing grade. Today's subject is Technical Architecture a vital part of this special certification which AIM created to support you as you solve your organization's existing information related problems and plan for its future. For 60 years AIM has been the leading nonprofit association helping users understand how to best manage documents, content, records, and business processes. This module is part of the Architecture and Systems Knowledge Domain, one of six within the certification program. In it, we'll look into the practices of virtualization. Virtualization is the creation of a virtual rather than an actual version of a computing resource or environment, such as a hardware platform, operating system, machine, storage device, or network resource. There are many forms of virtualization, including these. Presentation virtualization, which isolates processing from the graphics and input-output, making it possible for applications to project their user interfaces remotely for user sessions. There's user state virtualization a term invented by Microsoft to mean a condition in which the user state is separated from the underlying Windows operating system through the use of roaming profiles plus folder redirection with offline folder support. There's server virtualization, which involves running applications in separate isolated partitions, or virtual machines, within a single server. There's application virtualization, which occurs where an application is installed on a server and delivered to each user's PC as needed. And there's desktop virtualization, which allows users to remotely access their desktop from any location and use it as if they were in front of their actual computer. Virtualization offers advantages over operating individual units, as each virtualization does not require its own hardware, operating system, and software, and can lower the cost of deploying applications. On the flip side, virtualization does have some drawbacks associated with it. Among these are a high risk of physical faults. Because if the physical server hosting several virtual servers goes down, the failure will take all of those virtual servers offline. The remedy, which includes hardware redundancy, can increase costs significantly. Plus, it's difficult to find a disaster recovery solution that supports all the various virtualization solutions out there. There's a risk of performance loss. Because the virtual environment layer may not support a virtual operating system, and virtual applications as efficiently as it does the real things. Installing and running virtual objects requires specialized knowledge. An expert in server hardware and software setup and configuration may not be as capable when it comes to doing the same things in a virtual environment because of the special knowledge required to use the likes of VMware, Hyper-V, or Zen server virtualization software. Virtualization also is not supported by all applications. Some core applications, including a few database apps, are not yet ready or are not 100% certified for virtualization, and they may not behave properly when run that way. And then there's also virtualization sprawl. Because virtual computing objects are easy to clone and install, the number of virtual servers can easily grow faster than the number of staff who are supposed to manage them, taxing both personnel and performance. The deployment of new applications for use across the enterprise is easily performed through varied combinations of application, operating system, and server virtualization. Through virtualization-induced containers, applications can be isolated both from the hardware and from one another, preventing configuration conflicts that often complicate their introduction into IT systems. Virtualization has transitioned into a mainstream technology in today's data centers and is widely used to increase hardware utilization as well as to lower server operational costs in the data center. On the server side, virtualized interfaces is a direct on-ramp into cloud computing and often will be deployed as a private cloud. Fundamentally, you see, if an array of virtualized computing objects with these properties are centralized on a server in a physical location that's separate from the enterprise and remote users have access to that server, you have cloud computing. This topic is covered elsewhere in this course, but while we're here, it may be useful to know that there are at least five ways that virtualization unlocks the door to cloud computing. It enables economies of scale. It decouples users from implementation. 
It provides speed, flexibility, and agility. It breaks software pricing and licensing models. And it enables and motivates departmental chargeback. This module looked into the practice of virtualization. Next, we'll explore the ramifications of consumer technology's encroachment on organizational architectures. The material you have just reviewed is part of a broader program of study that prepares you to take the information certification exam. This proctor test consists of 100 multiple choice questions and is delivered electronically by Prometric. You'll have two hours to complete it, and upon passing, you'll earn a professional certification that's valid for three years. For more information, please visit www.aim.org slash certification. Thank you.